in book two, chapter 12 of The Sun Also Rises. The next morning, Jake wakes early and digs for worms before waking Bill. Bill jokes about Jake burying money in the dirt and about not ever wanting to get out of bed. Jake ignores him and continues prepping their supplies for the day's fishing. Bill tells Jake, you ought to be ironical the minute you get out of bed. You ought to wake up with your mouth full of pity. Bill complains that as an expatriate, Jake has lost touch with the soil and become too precious <laughs> about Europe. The joke goes too far when Bill claims Jake never works and women support him. Another group claims you're impotent, he says. No, Jake answers, mm -mm. I just had an accident. Bill realizes his mistake and quickly backpedals, telling his pal how much he admires him. After breakfast, Bill and Jake head to the river to fish. They fish in relative silence, quietly appreciating the beauty around them. They argue about the best way to catch trout, traditionally or fly fishing. Time passes. Jake catches six small trout to Bill's large four. Over lunch, they reminisce about a friend who passed away, and Bill jokingly says, our stay on earth is not for long. Let us rejoice and believe and give thanks. He carries on somewhat sarcastically as if delivering a religious sermon. And like always, he and Jake drink heavily. Jake admits to having been in love with Brett years ago, although he claims he doesn't give a damn anymore. Bill returns the conversation to religion, questioning Jake about how he could possibly be Catholic. Soon, they both fall asleep on the ground, their heads in the shade, staring up at the canopy of trees in the hot afternoon. They stay in Borghetti to fish for five days without receiving word from Brett or Cone. Like Cone, Bill provides a foil for Jake's character. Bill never fought in the war, but he was there, perhaps as a war correspondent. Whereas Jake suffers in stoic silence, Bill freely speaks his mind, talking openly about his feelings. His stories offer much needed comic relief to dispel the novel's rising tensions. Although their humor and offensive language, again on display in this chapter, now feel dated and needlessly hateful. Still, Bill uses sarcasm in the same way Jake uses silence, to deflect from issues before they penetrate too deeply. Bill seems indifferent to Brett's charms. Many critics have suggested that as the only male character not to pursue Brett romantically, Bill might be gay. A homophobic slur he uses in this chapter shows his insecurity. Homosexuality was not openly accepted in the 1920s. If Bill had a secret about his sexuality, it, like Jake opening up about his impotence, could explain their ability to be vulnerable within their friendship. Nature continues to play an important role in comforting Jake. The stream, the woods, hiking and fishing for trout, drinking wine that has been cooled in a spring and falling asleep among the trees. Their idyllic time in the natural setting sharply contrasts with the long shadow of drama cast over their time with bread and cone.